I have to admit, Benelli is not a brand that I'm overly familiar with. And to be honest, it's not even a brand I'd heard of. In fact, I really only know of their impressive six-cylinder from the 1970s, which by all accounts was one hell of a motorcycle. And that Aussie, Kel Carruthers, won the 250cc class at the Isle of Man on a Benelli in 1969. But the company has a rich history. Founded in the Italian city of Pissarro in 1911, they started by making bicycles, then made their first motorcycle in 1921, making them the second oldest Italian motorcycle brand still in business. But in 2005, Benelli was bought by the current owners, Chinese company QJ Motor, a company that produces 1.2 million motorcycles each year and employs over 14,000 people. Those are some pretty big numbers. We did a bit of research and found out that QJ Motor is in fact owned by the massive Geely Holding Group, which also owns Volvo, Polestar, Lotus and Smart. So you'd have to say they have some expertise with some big and iconic brands. But the question we have is this. Is the Benelli Leoncino 800 Italian hunk or Chinese junk? As always, if you like this video, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, check us out on Instagram and Facebook if you're after your daily fix of Biker Talk. And we've also set up the Biker Talk Facebook group. So if you're interested in that, then get over to Facebook and request access to the group. At the heart of the Benelli Leoncino 800 is a 754cc liquid-cooled parallel twin that delivers 76.2 brake horsepower at 8,500 RPM, with peak torque of 67 newton meters at 6,500 RPM. It's fuel injected with twin 43 millimeter throttle bodies, and it's got a wet multi-plate clutch and a slick six-speed gearbox. The engine sits in a brand new tubular trellis frame that gives the bike a muscular and sculpted look, much like the other famous Italian bike that I love, the Ducati Monster. Adding to that real beefy look are the massive 50mm Mazzocchi upside down forks. They're bigger than the ones on my BMW R18. The Mazzocchis are excellent and they have 140mm of travel. There are twin 320mm semi floating discs on the front with radial mounted four piston calipers and ABS. This sits on a 17-inch alloy rim with the Pirelli MT60 120-70 tyre. On the rear, there is a swing arm shock with adjustable preload, a single 260mm disc with a twin piston caliper and ABS. Again, this sits on a 17-inch alloy rim but with the Pirelli MT60 180-55 tyre. The wheelbase is 1,460mm and because of the wide handlebars, the width is 870 millimetres with a seat height of 805 millimetres and a ground clearance of 162 millimetres. It weighs 220 kilograms wet and has a 15 litre fuel tank. It's available in rock grey, forest green and terrain brown and the price in Australia is 13,490 right away. There is also a Leoncino trail version available that, lucky for us, has just been delivered. So we'll bring you that review very soon. I think we both agreed that the sound of the stock exhaust on the Leoncino 800 is great. It's got a really deep note that's loud enough without being really offensive. I have to admit, it's one of the things that I don't like about my MT-07. So the exhaust on the Benelli gets a big thumbs up from me and it certainly adds to the riding experience. The next thing on the list was the light anti-slip clutch. I've ridden quite a few bikes lately that you really need to work those muscles in your fingers to get the clutch in, but not so with the Leoncino 800. And the anti-slip components worked really well when downshifting, so no issues whatsoever. I love the look of the meaty front forks and the whole front end in general. It gives the bike a muscular, don't mess with me silhouette. It is enhanced by the excellent design of the radiator, which has a slight curve to it. I wouldn't say it's discreet, but it looks much cleaner and more compact than radiators on some other naked and modern retro bikes that I've seen. The little fly screen looks great and nicely covers the back of the TFT. And all up, I think Benelli have got the looks of this bike pretty much spot on. The seat for me was really comfy. It looks great. Tegan, how about you? Uh, overall, I really liked it and the seat was comfy, but I will come back to the seat a bit later on. 
I liked the TFT, it's a nice design and that little graphic that comes up at the start is pretty cool. All the information is clear and it has a fuel gauge and a gear indicator, which I really like. It has a usable amount of power, but it really does like to rev out. I found the engine to be an absolute peach from about 4,500 RPM. In that respect, it's quite similar to my Laverda. Maybe it's an Italian thing. So it's not a bike that you want to short shift as it's a little unforgiving if you're not in the right gear at lower revs. I thought it handled really well. It was great on freeways and still pretty good to commute on. Although you just have to be a bit careful filtering because of those really wide handlebars. But I found it's really quite stable and nimble. So even with the wide bars, I didn't have any issues filtering. The front brakes are excellent as you'd expect. Overall, I think we both found it to be a bit of a surprise packet and it's a bike that we certainly enjoyed cruising about on, but maybe you more so than me. Yeah, it's certainly more of an Italian hunk. Okay, the old bloke in me is not a fan of matte paint designs. And to prove that point, being a Gen Y, I like the matte paint design. But in this case, I wasn't actually a fan of the colour. However, the Leoncino Trail that's just arrived in rock grey looks awesome. Yeah, you could say it looks dope. No. Uh, sick. Please stop. Anyway, going back to the thing that I didn't like about the seat, it felt like the seams on the side were digging in a little bit, so for me, I actually found it a little bit uncomfortable. Now, let's bring Ross back so he can have his say. Now, overall, the design is wonderful, but there are two design elements on the Leoncino 800 that, for me, just don't work. First up, the toy-like line on the front guard. That just looks naff. And secondly, the absolute mess of wiring coming from the right-hand switch block and controls. Surely they could have come up with a better design than that. I had issues with the mirrors the first time I rode it, but as soon as I got the position right, they were fine. Okay, I actually found the mirrors to be a little bit small and tricky to get into a good position. I also found that at times the TFT was nearly impossible to see with the sun behind it, but that may have just been the matte finish on the TFT. Okay, Boomer, we get it. You don't like matte finishes. <laughs> the front brakes are excellent, but the rear brake was not so good. I found it to be sort of spongy and with not much bite, but this of course is a pretty common issue with a lot of bikes. I found the fueling to be a little bit twitchy at lower revs, but over 5,000 RPM and it was absolutely brilliant. I love that it has a fuel gauge, but it was a little bit unreliable. It would indicate nearly full for quite a while, but the level indicator would drop quite quickly once it hit about half full. The other thing that I found was that for a 750cc parallel twin, it did seem a little bit thirsty. Now I didn't get a chance to get any hard data on fuel economy because, to be honest, it was hard trying to pry the keys away from Tegan for long enough to do it. And I was having too much fun with it to be bothered with such trivial things like fuel economy. Honestly, if you're worried about it, then just buy an electric scooter. <laughs> That's good. So I really love the Leoncino 800. It was so much fun to ride and honestly a lot of that came down to the sound of the exhaust. In fact, I was a little disappointed when I had to hand the keys over to the next reviewer, Rob from Throttle Down Under. It handles well, looks and sounds great and for me, it's about an 8.5 out of 10. That's a pretty good score. For me it was about a 7.5 so let's average it out and call it a very solid 8. eight. <laughs> Benelli Leoncino for about two weeks and most of my riding was commuting but I did get out for a couple of longer rides. I live quite close to the spiritual home of all things Italian in Sydney, Norton Street Leichhardt. So I dropped by on my way to work one day to grab a coffee at Bar Italia. There are some really great restaurants along Norton Street including Ross's favourite, Grappa. Yeah, I do like good Italian food and Grappa is one of my favourites. I really need to get back there soon for a pizza or some spaghetti vongole. But there are plenty of other options along Norton Street to check out. The other day, we rode down to Cornell on the southern side of Botany Bay to a cool little venue called Cook at Cornell. So I do quite a few shots of press bikes at Cornell and I've seen Cook at Cornell many times and thought it looked pretty cool. Their specialty is one of my favourites, fish tacos. So I had some delicious fish tacos and a cold beer for lunch, which after the shoot was very pleasant indeed. Cook at Cornell is definitely worth a look if you're around the area and it was certainly a great destination to head to on the Benelli Leoncino 800. It's fair to say that we both really like this bike. But I liked it a little bit more than you did. 
it handles well and the engine is excellent. And if I wasn't doing as much commuting around the city and filtering as much as I do, I would probably consider buying one. It really is one hell of a fun bike to ride. I'd agree with that. It is fun and any concerns I had over the engine and general manufacturing quality were completely unfounded. If you like this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And remember, you can check us out on both Instagram and Facebook. That's it for today. Till next time, stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.